Okay. Uh, for today, we are going to talk about uh, various units for m measuring angles. Uh, this is not a complete discussion. We are going to have more discussion on this thing later on. So right now, for us, uh, units is simply a reference to the uh, measuring angles in terms of circles, degrees, uh, minutes, and uh, uh, seconds. These are units within the same system. There are going to be other units, namely radian measure and grad measure. We are going to talk about that later on. This is going to be short discussion. Then we are going to go to applications. How do we make use of trigonometry in uh, uh, measurements? That's going to be section 1, 2. And if we have time, we are going to get into arbitrary angles. and uh, their trick uh, functions. Uh, that's going to be a beginning of uh, quite a bit of complication for, for trigonometry. So that's, uh, if we get it started today, uh, we are going to have much more discussion to come up next week. Okay, the issue of units, uh, uh, we want to measure angles. Uh, and of course, if you are uh, measuring large angles, what you want to measure is in terms of circles. That is, how many times have you gone around a circle? For example, when you are talking about how engines perform, you talk about rounds per minute. Most of the car dashboards have some RPM somewhere there that tell you uh, a certain uh, component of the engine is turning at so many rounds per minute or something like that. So a uh, round or a circle will refer to just going around this thing, uh, one whole rotation. Of course, we are uh, most often dealing with uh, much smaller angles than just that one. And uh, the most uh, common measure that is used for angles is degrees. How is that defined? It is defined by saying a circle is 360 degrees. Where does this peculiar number come from? There are two guesses we can have. One is that from ancient times, people were interested in uh, uh, astronomy or astrology, and uh, 356 days or 65 days or something per, per year. And the amount of movement of uh, sun or something like that could be associated with about one degree, or something is changing about one degree per day in the year. So 360 is a round number to use in that context. Uh, and from ancient times, these kind of measurements used to be quite precise, surprisingly. And one degree, even though it's quite a small angle, people could handle it from, from many, many years ago, thousands of years ago. <coughs> Another uh, guess is that many ancient civilizations used to count in base 60 the way we count in base 10. Some ancient civilization used to count in base 60, and perhaps that has uh, some influence here as well, and the influence continues. The influence continues by the following. One degree is how many minutes? Uh, it's considered to be 60 minutes. That's a really tiny angle. So you're taking one circle, dividing it to one, 360, and already that's hardly visible. So one degree uh, is really a small angle. If you take that, break that up to 60 pieces, each of them is going to be one minute. And then it keeps going on like that. Again, you see that peculiar number, 60. It must be uh, related to those ancient civilizations. <laughs> And uh, next, one minute is again broken down to much smaller uh, fractions. Uh, it's going to be 60 seconds. <coughs> Pretty much all the examples you see in the text, that's where it stopped. But again, 
calculations in astronomy tend to be so precise, people keep going. So if in some other books you see one second is still broken down to 60 thirds, don't be surprised. But uh, this doesn't show up in your calculator or in the text or something. I'm just mentioning it on the side. So this, uh, this is one system as opposed to a more civilized system. The civilized system would be uh, base 10 operation. Base 10 operations are going to use uh, another unit, which is called grad and such. But typically, people mix and match their uh, degree measurements. Let's go ahead and practice some of these uh, issues. Uh, you definitely need a calculator. and uh, the calculator may or may not have a conversion a button for you. You want to be able to handle it yourself. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a few of these exercises. For example, problem 32. This is from uh, section 1.1, one, one, and we are on page 12. Uh, it says, uh, pick the angle 52 degrees in 15 minutes. So a degree, that's a notation for a degree a minute, a second. By the way, one of the places you might see this peculiar notation is on the deed for your house. Yeah, they give you a GPS coordinates of the corners of your hou house or something. You're going to see this thing there, so probably that's the only place in your life you see that. There's a, supposed to be a piece of metal at the corner of your property. And that's supposed to give you a coordinate of that. Uh, that coordinate uses this notation. OK. It, uh, the story here is convert to decimal notation. Decimal notation. It's a kind of mix-match style. That is, we say 52 degrees. We keep that. Uh, excuse me. We keep that as a notation that is given to us. The degree stays. The uh, 15 minute. We say 15. Uh, 60 minutes makes one degree. So 15 minutes. I divide this by 60 to see how many degrees it's going to make. So this is 52. And it, this one turns out to be a nice number, so one fourth. So my, it says convert to decimal notation, so we write it as 52.25 degrees. Okay, so this whole thing, this means a quarter of a degree, a quarter of a degree happens to be 15 uh, minutes and so on. Let's do another one. Suppose we have problem 36. It says convert 19 degrees. 47 minutes 23 seconds so that would be 19 okay to convert 47 to degrees what should I do 60 to convert 23 if I want to convert it to minutes I divide by 60 if I want to convert to degrees what do I, what would I divide by Okay, we have to divide by 60 and then divide by 60 again. So 60, uh, if you wish, let me write it like this. 23, you have to divide it by 60. By now, it has turned into minutes. You have to divide by 60 again to convert it into degrees. So what happens to these two 60s? They uh, multiply them, is that right? So if you have a fraction, you want to divide by a number or by another fraction, what do you do? You multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. Is that right? So you have to multiply these two numbers. So this becomes 23 divided by 3,600, if you want to go one single issue. Uh, 3,600, that's 60 squared. So if you wish. can say one degree is 60 minutes uh, how many seconds it's 
is each minute is 60 seconds, one degree, then it's going to become 3,600 seconds. So if you want to convert from seconds straight forward to degrees, uh, just divide by 3,600. Okay? Is that clear? Then you pick your calculator, and uh, since these things are not going to simplify all that much, uh, there isn't much you can do with it. You just punch it in and see what you get. And you want to make sure that that well, you need to work your calculator several times to make sure you know how it works, how to uh, <coughs> play with it, and so on. So I get 19.78972, and that 2 keeps repeating. You can keep writing some of them, or you can uh, use the repetition notation in either way. So this is your uh, uh, it is round to two decimal places. Uh, that, that's a little bit uh, odd statement from the text because if you are giving me such a precise angle, why would you want to throw away the precise portion of it? But if you want to do that, it says round to two decimal places. Uh, two decimal places, we want to keep there. So we look at the next digit. If it is five or above, what do we do? Round up. If it is zero, one, two, three, four, we just cut it off. So 19.79, if I ask you, I probably go to four, four decimal places. <coughs> OK, and so on. So uh, what we learned here is that if you have uh, so many degrees and so many uh, minutes and so many seconds, if you want to convert to decimal, this your degree stays, your minute has to divide by 60, your seconds have to divide by 3,600, uh, and that's going to be in this whole thing, whatever it is, is in degrees. Sometimes you want to go the other way around, and the uh, example of that would be like uh, problem 14, no, 44. <coughs> It says, how about 20 degrees, 20.14 degrees. I write this thing in degrees, minutes and seconds. So here, convert to degrees. Of course, this has 20 whole degrees. The question is, how about the rest of it? 0.14 degrees. I want to convert that. I want to convert that to minutes. What do I do? I say each degree is 60 minutes. So these many degrees, what should I do? Multiply by 60. So you multiply this thing by 60. And then you see that you get what? Uh, uh, okay. So this is 8.4 minutes. You extract the whole portion of that. You say, okay, this is 8 minutes. Is that right? And then you keep the fractional portion. Fractional portion is 0.4 0 0.4 minutes, uh, you want to convert that into seconds. Again, you multiply by what? By 60. So 0.4 times 60 becomes 24. And what? 24 what? 24 seconds. In this case, we don't have any fractional portion left. Fortunately, that's all there is. If there was some fraction, uh, we, we have two choices. Either report it as a decimal, or if you want to play this game more, you can go from seconds to thirds, but the book or software doesn't recognize that, so that's where you stop. Whatever this number is, 
you keep it as it is. So we say 20.14 degrees is same as 20 degrees, 8 minutes, 24 seconds. Now, your calculator may or may not have uh, such a button that uh, will have a notation like this on it. You'll have to consult the manual of the calculator to see how to operate that. So, sometimes it looks like this. Okay, let me just pick a few problems uh, from a different uh, category of problems. If you have any question about any of these things, uh, just let me know. Okay, problems from 31 all the way through uh, 70 essentially are asking you to go and check your calculator make sure you know how to use it any question from them like, like the last of these 70s asking you what is sign of 59.2 degrees what are the issues that you need to figure out on your calculator first of all your calculator has a so-called mode button you have to figure out where that is. In the mode button, you are going to see degree, radians, and grads. You have to set it on the correct mode. Otherwise, some of your problems are going to come up with wrong answers. And I wouldn't know where it came from. And you'd be a bit, a bit unhappy about it. So that's why you need the manual of your calculator or its website and be able to set this so after you set this thing then you enter your number so now again it depends what calculator you use older style calculators uh, very basic one you use this one you enter your number then you enter the function that you apply to it nice and justifiable the newer calculators try to be user friendly and then you type as you see. So on newer calculators you press sign. It don't mean, uh, let me see what does mine do. So I enter, where is my sign? Here's my sign. There. My calculator is nice enough that it opens a parenthesis for me. Then I enter my number like 59.2 I'm sure the calculator is forgiving that if I press the equal sign it still gives me the answer uh, it surely did but it is a good uh, exercise for you to figure out that there is indeed a parentheses button on your calculator you typically don't use it but uh, just get used to it uh, to see where it is so after you enter this you can you have the option of entering the right parentheses that makes it nice <coughs> and kind of foolproof you give your answers okay so issue number one figure out where is the mode button make sure that uh, you are setting it on degrees or whatever you want when you set on degrees there is a little marking somewhere on your calculator a little d shows up if you do that, a little R is going to show up somewhere. If you do that, a little G is going to show up. We never use this guy. <coughs> so it's between those two. Okay. Some of the calculator jumping, uh, the text is jumping the gun a little bit on some of these issues, like uh, problem 71. It says, uh, I give you the 
a trig function of an angle, you tell me what the angle itself is. Later on, we are going to study this thing more extensively on the so-called inverse trig functions. But now we are just getting our feet wet and uh, getting the basics done. How do you use a calculator to do this? If it was a famous number, of course, you do it from memory. But for any of these things, you enter the number. Again, it depends on the make and model of your calculator. You want to figure out theta. Theta is going to be arc sine. There's a. Let me write it and then I explain. Uh, let me just briefly mention what the whole story is, and then we come back and explain what the issue is here. Let me take you back to your. Uh, algebra classes. If you have a number and you square it, you understand what squaring means. You multiply the number by itself. 5 squared is going to give you what? 25. So you are essentially, uh, or if you are dealing with 6 squared, you say, okay, 36. If it was uh, some decimal number, you work a little bit harder and you get your answer. So this is the function x squared. Sometimes you want to go in reverse. That is, you are asking what number squared is going to give me 49. And what's the answer in this case? 7 is a minus 7, 2. But for now, we gloss over that issue. So that is a square root button. If, uh, if, if I was dealing with a little bit, uh, say, 10. You're going to have a little bit harder time to handle that. What function do you use to extract the missing quantity here? Uh, in these cases, you rely on your memory, but in general, you need a function to take you back. That is a square root uh, function. Okay? Now, with trig functions, same story. We have studied the uh, six trig functions. You take your trig functions, apply it to some angle, and you get an answer. Sometimes you want to go in reverse, that the answer is given, and you want to find out what the angle was in in, to begin with that gave you that. For each trig function, there is a so-called inverse trig function that does the job for you, just in the same way that x squared and square root of x are a pair of functions, one of them opposite of the other one, or is undoing the action of the other one. For each trig function, there is another one which is going to undo the activity of this. There are two notations that people use for it, and your calculator might have either of, uh, either of these notations. One of them is called arc sine, and the other one uh, some calculators use is a sine with a minus 1 on top of it. It doesn't mean reciprocal, it means the inverse function. So on your calculator, you figure out which button is it that does the job for you. Either there is a separate button that's called arc simply, and you have to press that one, and then press the sign button, and then you enter your number. Or there is a button on your calculator that says sign on top of it is uh, sign inverse written like this. <coughs> And then there is another button in the corner of your calculator which might be called either inverse or a function or f with the minus 1 on top of it. Again, we are kind of stuck with the fact that there are so many makes and models and everybody does it a little bit differently. What you pay attention to is that this button is in the same color as that one. So they are color coordinated that is going to be your clue. <clears throat> and again, if it was a basic calculator, your number goes first, then you apply the function. In the newer ones, you apply the names just the way you write them down, and then you apply you or type in your number. Either way, let me see how many of you found out what the answer is. Okay, uh, so 0.51 
apply. You said what? Thirty point eight three zero stuff four nine seven four three. That's what my calculator does. But uh, we don't want to oversell these things. If your beginning number has a certain precision, like somebody only bothered to give you four decimal places. Uh, you don't want to go overboard and give too many of these things. So the text says give them to tenth of a degree. So tenth of a degree means stopping at what number? So tenth of a degree is going to be here, 30.8 degrees. That is our answer in this case. So again, here the issue is to find the, these buttons. Either it's called arc or is called sine inverse and you learn how to use them next issue next issue is that uh, most calculator all the ones that I have seen just deal with the primary uh, functions primary functions are sine cosine and tangent the other three are kind of orphans they don't have buttons associated with them cosecant and cotangent so what do you do when you are handling these type of problems? Take the inverse. We learned that the values of these functions are reciprocal of those. So you use the reciprocal identities to handle these if you need your calculator, meaning you have to do a little bit of work yourself. So use reciprocal identities. Say it again. Uh, that reminds me of my high school days. Yes, that's what we had to do. Uh, good old days. Uh, so, such as what? Such as, uh, say, problem 79. It says cotangent of theta is equal to 2.127. Find out what theta is. You go look at your calculator, there's no cotangent button. What do you do? Since a cotangent is reciprocal of a tangent. Okay, uh, you say tangent of some angle is 1 over 2.127. So first you do this one, you say 1 divided by 2.127. You get that one, so that is point. 4701 for example and then you apply so here we haven't done any trick we just took the reciprocal then we say what is the arc tangent of that number or if your calculator has this button tangent inverse of 0 0.4701 and try to get it up of there so we are going to have inverse tangent of 0 0.4701 and what do you get? 20 point uh, so again remember for the three secondary <coughs> trig functions first you take the reciprocal and then you apply the inverse trig function, then you have your angle. Okay, the next batch of exercises here are asking you things of the following type. Sine of 64 degrees is equal to what function of 26 degrees and what reciprocal of 64 itself? So it is just leaving some, here's a blank, here's a blank for you to fill in. 
what identities are applicable here you look at these two angles and you say they are what type of angles one of those words uh, uh, that are, yeah, what that is not going to help us complementary good that you didn't say 1492 but, uh, so what uh, co complementary angles what about them what is a big deal but what the, what was complementary is if this is 64 what is left over for the other side 26 complementary add up to 90 degrees so if you have two angles that add up to 90, deg 90 degrees you call them complementary what's big deal about them if you are calculating sine of this which is ratio of opposite so let's call this B and C sine of 64 would have been opposite to a hypotenuse if you figure that out what function of 26 degrees have you found out what function of 26 degrees is the same ratio for 26 degrees it's going to be adjacent to C which is the, the function cosine so what we are researching for here is the function cosine here the second piece is the reciprocal identity sine of 64 degrees the same as reciprocal of what trig function of 64 yeah so if I had like if I was measuring cosecant of 64 in this picture it would have been the ratio of hypotenuse to the opposite so cosecant of 64 is reciprocal of sine of 64 so this is cosecant so the exercises of the type you see 93 through 96 and so on Ninety-seven, also ninety-seven, ninety-eight. They are more or less going around those ideas. At the end of the set of exercises, in any of these sections, the text tries to refresh your mind about some basic ideas from algebra, uh, basic functions, trigs, uh, exponentials, logarithms, and such, so that while you are learning trig, you don't forget your algebra. So those end exercises are so-called maintenance exercises they are not uh, uh, directly related to trade question yes here this is this one is cosine this is cosecant cosecant being reciprocal of sine okay any other question from these uh, exercises here so there are like see there are lots of exercises here but they are like tiny essentially peanut exercises they are like one minute and you do one of them you essentially learn uh, what it is so make sure you do one at least one if you are a little bit rusty in your trigonometry then do all the odd numbered ones and do as many as you can and then keep going in the next section we want to talk about applications let's see we don't have probably that much time applications of trig is essentially built on the idea of similarity that's the most uh, basic idea there plus some uh, geom uh, geometry tricks that we can apply to get uh, some precise answers and use our identities so first thing that you should keep in mind is the idea of similarity similarity means what if you have two triangles which have same angles then so if these angles are the same then the ratio of respective sides are the same respective means if you are picking the adjacent of this also pick the adjacent of that that is respective or the pair of that one this is a pair of that one hypotenuse is a pair of hypotenuse you can write it in two styles you can write it in the nicest style would be saying uh, 
ratio of the respective parts are all the same. Or if you want to rearrange it, that is make your uh, ratios one ratio inside of a small picture, then the corresponding ratio in the big picture will be same. And then if you have ratio, for example, A over C, same as A prime over C prime. If you have uh, <coughs> B over C, that's same as B prime, C prime. So either of these two apply. What's the general idea? General idea is that uh, well, uh, we essentially hire somebody to go and find these trig functions of a whole range of angles. We say, okay, you go and find out what is sine of one degrees, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees. Find all of these things and write them down somewhere. In all days, at the end of these texts, there will be a table with all those numbers written down. You have to consult those tables. And those tables are gone because of the advent of these calculators, but occasionally you can still find them. Or if you go rummage through your dad's uh, engineering book or something or high school books, you are going to see those things at the end of the text. And if you dig enough into that uh, treasure house, you might find even his slide rule or something. That, that's what people used to use. But those kind of gone because uh, the calculators become so cheap. Either way, the calculator also has some mechanism by which it calculates the trig functions of any angle. So that's your outsourcing component. And then you come and say some, uh, something that you want to measure and there's a triangle you want to measure, and you have uh, done some of the measurements. You want to use trigonometry to do the other measurements. What's the idea? The idea is the idea of similarity. Suppose you want to measure uh, uh, the height of the, say, gray library, and then uh, one measurement that you had done. So the, here's the height you want to find. You have stepped out by, say, uh, 30 feet or something. And then you sighted the top of the building. And the top of the building showed up at, say, uh, 70 degrees. OK? Just to make up uh, a scenario. So this is 30 feet. You look up. You measure that by uh, instrument. <coughs> say, that is 70 degrees. Now you say. Well, what do I know about a trig function of 70 degrees that connects these two measurements? One of them is adjacent to me, one of them is opposite to me. What function will connect these things? What is that? Tangent. So tangent of 70 degrees would have been, whatever the triangle is, would have been the ratio of opposite to the adjacent. Doesn't matter what size it is. It's now one side of it is the library's edge, and the other one is my distance from the library. So here's the library, and you stood, uh, you, you're standing here. So h over 30. Now, how can I rearrange this thing to get my h? Well, I multiply, is that right? I cross multiply. So tangent, so tangent over 1 is equal to h over 30, I multiply, this is h, multiply these two is 30 tangent of 70 degrees. Okay, so this is that you are either outsource to somebody to sit down and draw a measure and give it to you, or it's in a table, or nowadays it's in your calculator. When you pick it out, say 30 times, uh, I say 30 times, Tangent of, again, there's the issue of <coughs> getting your calculator under your control. If you have any problem with these things, uh, please resolve it early and uh, ask me what it is. So, uh, how to use it. So, what do you get? 36. Yes, 82.42. So, you got 36. Come and check with me. Let me see what you were doing that uh, you got the wrong answer. So about 82 feet.
So that is essentially the idea of applications that we have in mind. Uh, uh, let's pick some examples. And most of the examples are of this type. So you just draw your triangle. Uh, the main challenge is understanding what the problem is talking about. That's the biggest challenge. Converting from an English description to a geometry with some numbers and uh, designations on a picture. That is the big challenge. There isn't anything else to do. All the time you have some function of some angle equal to a ratio and then you figure it out. Some of the problems tend to be quite a bit trickier though and let me just, I, I mentioned it once before, let me uh, bring this issue up. Suppose uh, we said we wanted to measure, okay, so the most fun part is coming up with a strategy that's actually going to give you the measurement. Suppose we want to measure the height of a mountain, but our mountain is not like a building, so it doesn't come straight down. We don't have the luxury of just making one uh, simple right triangle and measuring off of that. We have to do something trickier than that. The trickier than that is to make two sightings. So we make one sighting here, go way out, make a measurement, whatever it is, write it down for the sake of discussion. Let's say that this is, say, uh, 25 degrees, whatever. Then walk back. <coughs> So, uh, walk a certain distance back, let's, uh, again, let's say you walk back 300 feet, make a second sighting, again, for sake of discussion, let's pick some nice numbers, suppose this is, give me an angle, like, is it going to be smaller or bigger than this? smaller, so, so say 20 degrees. So, we have to work a little bit harder because the mountain has a skirt here and we don't know what how big this one is. So our solution is to step back. One, while you are stepping back, you can measure to see how far you have stepped back. You have to look at the same spot up here. Now, the challenge is that we don't know what this one is. Let's call it X but we have a way of getting around it so that X would not be an issue for us. Let me ask you what is cotangent of uh, this angle, 20 degrees, on this picture. Of course, you can find it on your calculator. What, what I'm asking is that you f tell me, or maybe I ask you an easier question first. What is, in this picture, what's cotangent of 25? What was cotangent, the ratio of which to who? If you have an angle like this, if this is your angle A and this is A, B, C, cotangent of A is what ratio? Yeah. yeah, A over B in this case will be X over H. How about here? Excellent. So 300 plus X over H. Now comes the punchline. I don't care about X, really. My first objective is to get H. What should I do to these two things so that X gets itself wiped out? Well, I'm looking for another word. I want to do something to these two expressions that wipes out X. No. Try again? No. What should I do to, to 300 plus X, something very simple. X over H, what do you do to them so the X's go away? Subtract them, is that right? Okay, uh, let's see, uh, I'll show you. So cotangent of 20 is this one. I want to subtract that one from it, and these two angles, you can, you can do cotangent of 20 and 25 on your calculator and figure that out. Now, when you subtract these two, what's left? You take a common denominator, H, 
300 plus x minus x what is left 300 over h so 300 is how much you backed up h is your mystery number these are cotangent of the two sighting angles that you have so what should I do now so by now what I'm left with is cotangent of 20 minus cotangent of 25 we haven't replaced those things with numbers yet just to avoid clutter 300 over h how do I get h out of this equation just like uh -huh. you have to just cross multiply and divide 300 over cotangent of 20 minus cotangent of 25 so here is a formula for finding the height of a mountain the amount that you backed up by divided by cotangent of the smaller angle minus cotangent of, of the first angle this one gives you the uh, h height and you don't need to do any drilling you don't need to figure this out or do anything fancy so sometimes you need to use geometry to find the trick that helps you to do the measurement so perhaps this is the uh, nicest example in this section so you do section one two for <coughs> Monday and uh, we try to have uh, more examples if you want and we are gonna go on to section one three you want to pre-read that next week on uh, Wednesday or Friday I might give you a quiz on uh, <coughs> uh, 1112 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. okay I'm not closing it